Um, if you haven't heard of food fraud, don't worry. Not many people have, even, even in industry. But it's, it's the, um, the use of food to commit some type of, of fraudulent act for, for financial gain. So if you think about melamine in pet food, melamine was put in to spike the apparent protein content. And things like milk are sold in some countries based on protein content as a quality. Um, horse meat in beef in Europe, that the horse meat was a low was a, a residual product and lower price. They, they mixed it in. Actually, in Iceland, they, they did some testing and they had zero percent animal protein in their beef there. So, maybe <laughs> wow. that's bad. But uh, anyway. <laughs> so that's food fraud. And the thing that we've seen is is with MSU we're really leading the the, the, the path because. Most times people are focused only on the food science, on detection, or they're only focused on supply chain, different things. We jumped right in the middle. And so we're in a unique position. Also, MSU being so involved in outreach to industry with food, food Institute of Food Technologists, food industry, there's a great, great um, outreach component there. So we had started doing a lot of work, writing articles and working with those industry groups, defining food fraud, defining what is prevention, and just the engagement was very high. And we've done along the way uh, webinars, um, the graduate online graduate class in food safety covers a lot of these concepts for drawing people, um, and then really wanted to do more. And so, so my original goal was to take a make it a glorified webinar. I wanted it to be something between an, an angel-based graduate class, you know, 15 weeks, and a webinar. And Global said this idea of this MOOC thing is, is along, and I said, well, I trust you guys. I have no idea what you're doing. You're freaking me out. I usually freak people out, <laughs> but um, I, I went with it, and it was a great experience. Um, so, so what we did is we took a glorified webinar and, and turned it into more of a course and created a, uh, a, a community almost. So we had, it was a two, two hour webinars, one week apart. So students came in a week before and we had content open, readings, access, discussion boards. They interacted, I interacted with them. Then we had the, the live two hour MOOC and there was an assessment after that, a quiz. We did have a multiple choice quiz. And then, oh, then the next week opened, so kind of like an angel class. And then there were readings, there were discussion boards, and then the following week, exactly a week later, did the, the two-hour webinar again. Um, and uh, it worked great. And one of the things was that we were looking at, we talked about bigger, smaller, um, you know, longer, shorter, and it was perfect because it's a food fraud overview. And what we're trying to do is people at anywhere, and, and we, we, we talked about charging a little bit for it and not, but having it free was key. Because anybody in a, in a company could just log in and take it. Anybody that's a student at an agency anywhere in the world could take it as well. And since it was MSU, since we had leading research in the area, and it was, it was a hot topic, there was no reason why anybody wouldn't want to promote it or forward it. We had one, we don't even know who they are. Someone in Brazil in a, in a food association posted it. We had 215 people from Brazil in the MOOC. And it was from that one we saw a spike on Google Analytics from one person reaching out. The you know, Global Food Safety Initiative tweeted about it and, and listed it. Um, now FAO, the UN, it wants to use it as a platform for education of this new topic. So there's no reason in the world why someone wouldn't want to do it. 